that we maybe show you something new. And we just want to uh, really invite you to listen up and then ask questions at the end. And we will be happy to answer any of those. So we're going to start with um, Liza, I believe, is going to start us off. Is that correct, Jessica? Yes. Yes, thank you. So I'll now turn it over to Liza. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cynthia. And good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you, even if it's just virtually. And so what I'm going to do is give you an overview of what happened in the market last year and our returns. And I thought it would be helpful to start with this chart, which shows what the S&P 500 index did during the year, as well as the volatility index, because it was quite a volatile year, as you can imagine. So we start off the first quarter of the fiscal year, where the market essentially was pretty much flat. And that was based on rising trade tensions with China and slowing global growth. So the portfolio earned just a positive 0.9% for the first quarter of the fiscal year. Then we moved into the quarter ending December, and you can see the stock market starts rising substantially. Volatility continues to stay low. There was progress on trade talks with China and easing Brexit fears. And we had a return of 4.6% for that quarter. So that brought us for the first half of the year to a cumulative return of five and a half percent. Then of course we moved into the March quarter. As you all know, that was when the COVID pandemic hit. The economy was shut down, businesses were closed, there were oil price wars. You can see the S&P 500 from the peak to the trough fell 34% in 33 days and ended the quarter down 20%. Volatility spiked up to about 80, and that was a level that we have not seen since the global financial crisis. So there was a lot of volatility and negative returns for stocks. That put our cumulative return through the third quarter of the fiscal year at a minus 6.6%. So then we moved into the fourth quarter of the year, and you can see once again, stocks rebounded, US stocks rebounded significantly. They were up around 20%. Non-U.S. stocks were up in the teens. Riskier bonds like emerging market debt and high yield had positive returns. Even conservative, shorter maturity U.S. Treasury bonds were up a couple percent during the quarter. And real estate and private equity returns started to moderate. So then if we turn to the next slide, this shows you that we managed to eke out a 0.5% positive rate of return. So while that is disappointing, we also underperformed the benchmark. So why was that? Well, the primary driver of that underperformance was actually US stocks, because there's a real story of dichotomy in the stock market. Growth stocks, stocks whose earnings are growing faster than their peers, continue to outperform value stocks, which are stocks where their price is undervalued compared to their peers. As an example, growth stocks in the S&P 500 were up almost 18% during the year versus value stocks, which were down 4.5%. Then you had tech stocks. I'm sure you have all heard of the FANG stocks, the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Very strong returns. Of course, we participated in some of that, but the equity portfolio obviously isn't all in those stocks. For the past five years, those tech stocks have returned an annualized return of over 41%. And then large cap stocks, so stocks of large companies like a Walmart, compared to small cap stocks, which could be something like a Domino's Pizza, large cap stocks continue to outperform their small cap peers. And then we had one manager in particular that really had a disastrous, disastrous quarter in March and has since been terminated. But then we also look at longer term returns. So you look at the 10 year return of 8.6%. And if you actually look at each individual return during that period, we had four years where we underperformed the actuarial assumed rate of return of 6.5%. But then we had six years of strong outperformance. And that return of 8.6% 
puts us in the top 14th percentile of the BNY Mellon public fund universe. And then if you see the long-term returns since inception of 8.7%, that puts SD SERS in the top second percentile of that public funds universe. So where are we now? At the end of June, the trust fund was valued at 8.4 billion. We are now up back over 9 billion. Of course, that does include the three ADC payments from the three plan sponsors. But we've also seen 20 trillion in global stimulus, stocks moving higher, tech stocks doing well, the Fed not being expected to raise interest rates anytime soon. We are expecting some volatility because there's concerns over the election. There's concerns about what's gonna happen this fall with COVID and flu. There are budget deficits at the state and local level and the economic growth for this year is expected to be negative, but is expected to rebound pretty strongly next year. Right now where we are, we've generated a positive return around 5% through yesterday. And what I wanna emphasize is while the, the return for the year was disappointing, we don't focus on one year results. We're long-term investors. We have a well-diversified plan. This is not a one-year sprint. This is a long-term marathon. And we believe over the long-term, we will generate adequate results to pay benefits. And that concludes my comments. And I would like to turn it over to Marcel Rossman, who is our deputy CEO. Thank you. Unmute, of course. Thank you, Liza. I appreciate those comments. And good morning. Look, I'm glad to see everybody out there. Again, echoing Liza, we're really happy when we can see you live and not via Zoom, but this is still great to see everyone. I'm going to talk a little bit about how SD SERS has continued to um, support our members during this pandemic. Um, it requires some significant changes, and I I want to extend my gratitude to our member services team and our benefits administration team for continuing to serve our members so well during this pandemic. I want to first of all talk about what was seamless. So March 20th, we got the stay home order and we sent everybody home. Um, we have about 90% of our staff teleworking. We continue to have our offices closed to the public, including our members, um, and are handling everything virtually right now. The things that you wouldn't have seen any difference in is monthly payrolls. Our monthly payrolls have all been done accurately and timely. We did not miss a beat. On March 20th, we were right in the middle of processing March payroll and had to complete that remotely and we were able to do so. Um, we, a statistic that we prepare every year in June is how long does it take us to actually pay our members? So on average, from when our member receives their last paycheck from their plan sponsor, to when they received their first paycheck from SD SERS, it's about 21 days. And we continued doing that through the pandemic. And we continued doing that in the month of June when we had literally four times the number of people entering drop, exiting drop, and service retiring. So even with that increased activity, even with staff at home, we still met that 21 days after your final paycheck, you would have received your first SD SERS check. Um, we also continue to process health reimbursements. And there was not a hiccup in that as well. Annual statements went out to all of our active members as they do every year in the late summer and that went off without a hitch and we're continuing to do account updates. So if you need to change your direct deposit, change your tax withholding for our active members that are doing purchase of service credit, um, if they're establishing reciprocity, all of those things are continuing to happen completely seamlessly even though they are being done by remote staff. However, there are some things we were not able to continue doing in person and live. And so we had to pivot to doing some things remotely. Um, on March 13th, the prohibition on group meetings came down. So March 20th is when the stay home order came, but March 13th was a prohibition on group meetings. And so that's when we we'd had our committee meetings. We had to scramble and do a meeting for our board on the 13th that ended up being a teleconference. So that was our first activity we had to do remotely. 
we offer seminars to our members and we've had to pivot those into webinars and Jessica Maloney has done a fantastic job on the switch there. They have been so well received that we've actually done significantly more webinars than what we had originally planned for the live seminars. And we anticipate that once we are all back in the office, we'll continue to offer some webinars and it'll be a mix of live seminars and webinars. Uh, one of the nice things on the webinar is Jessica's able to actually review the accounts of the members that are attending and tailor the presentation because she knows exactly who she's gonna have there. The other thing we had to pivot on was health open enrollment. So we normally have two live events. We weren't able to do those. We did partner with SDPBA and REA to do a virtual health fair. So we were able to help members that way, but that was a big change for this year. Um, the other thing we had to change was our counseling appointments. So all of our counseling appointments are now phone appointments. And that has gone well. That's another area where we anticipate once we're all back in the office that we will probably still give members an option. Um, we prefer they come in. Most people do prefer to come in and meet with a counselor face to face. But for those that it's not convenient or it's challenging for them to get to our offices, we'll be able to do phone counseling appointments. Um, the, probably the biggest difference was our call center. So on March 20th, when we got the stay home order, we had to shut down our call center. And that was shut down for one third of March, all of April and all of May. And so during that time period, we still needed to have contact with our members and we still needed to be able to meet their needs. I'm happy to report March was challenging. We had about 65% of our normal member contacts that month. In April, it bumped up to 80%. In May, it bumped up to 90%, and we are back now to our normal number of contacts with our members. So we had a little bit of a downturn, but very little there. We were still able to contact our customers. They were able to contact us. We were able to process whatever they needed to have done. And the last thing that we had to do, uh, then along with that, we got our remote call center up. And that was a huge work, um, work pill for our member services team and so happy that they were successful. On August 18th, our remote call center opened. So this now means that our call center staff can take your calls wherever they are. So we still have, as I said, 90% of our staff is teleworking. So when you call in and you talk to one of our call center members, they are most likely at home, possibly still in their pajamas, but they are able to answer your calls and help serve you. The last thing that we did that is really a big change is we've gone to Zoom meetings. So we changed our board meetings are now Zoom meetings. Our staff meetings are Zoom meetings. In fact, this morning we had our quarterly rewards and recognition meeting that is a all STSER staff meeting and that was a Zoom meeting. Um, we've had Zoom meetings with our plan sponsors. We do meet with our plan sponsors on a regular basis and we've converted those all to Zoom meetings. And then of course, one of our most important constituents, you all, REA, we've been able to do Zoom meetings with you as well. So throughout this, we have found ways to change the way we do business and make sure that we continue to meet the needs of our members. And with that, I will turn it over to our CEO, Greg Rodemaker. Thank you. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't count those chickens before they hatch. Whistling girls and cackling hens never come to a good end. A penny saved is a penny earned. A picture is worth a thousand words. Those in glass houses should not throw stones. Actions speak louder than words. Good things come to those who wait. Slow and steady wins the race. Good manners don't cost anything. And for this election season, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. These are all sayings I remember from my parents and my grandparents. And they shared them with me to you know, help all of us understand and make good decisions in a complex world, kind of in a simple way. Now, I also remember my parents and grandparents sharing some sayings to keep me out of trouble as a young lad. Look before you leap. Don't burn your candle at both ends. Birds of a feather flock together. If you lay with dogs, you're gonna get fleas. There's no such thing as a free lunch. And the hardest thing to do at the middle school dance, leave room for Jesus. So, they also had sayings to install hope during difficult times. It's always the darkest before the dawn. Every dark 
cloud has a silver lining. A new day will dawn and things always look better in the morning. One of my favorite sayings that I learned later in life was every challenge encountered is an opportunity for growth. The saying serves as a guiding light in times of uncertainty and chaos. It helps me change my perspective from worrying about nebulous and uncontrollable things to actually focusing on something constructive and something I can do positive with things I can control. Did you know SD Serves is a shiny example of every challenge is an opportunity for growth? One such challenge was about 15 years ago when the media was awash with stories of the city and SD Serves being under investigation by the Security Exchange Commission and the U.S. Attorney's Office due to a inadequate pension benefit disclosures in the city's bond offering document. Additionally, the federal government, state of California, and the city attorney filed charges against SD SERS officials for conflict of interest stemming from a funding agreement between the city and SD SERS. The fallout was tremendous and far reaching. The city was unable to borrow money to and halted capital projects that were supposed to help our community. A leadership crisis ensued when city officials resigned or retired. This included the mayor, the city manager, the deputy city manager, the city auditor, the deputy city auditor, and the treasurer, just to name a few. Key retirement officials resigned and retired, including several board members, the retirement administrator, and the general counsel. Understandably, this governance challenge was overwhelming and long-lived. Some wondered if this was the end of pensions for SD SERS members. It most certainly was not. Every challenge is an opportunity for growth. Federal and state indictments were dismissed. The city attorney did not prevail and did not win his re-election. The city paid additional contributions into the retirement trust fund. SD SERS was reinvented with a new board, a new management team, and a stronger governance structure. The city and members always make their pension contributions in full and on time. The funding of policy authority rests solely with the SD SERS Board of Administration, and SD SERS operates with an increased level of transparency. SD SERS growth from the opportunity from the governance challenge was to increase SD SERS ability to deliver ca cash, I'm sorry, the ability to deliver each and every monthly benefit payment to our retirees on time and in full. In other words, increased level of benefit security for all of its members. Did you know that the independent plan actuary performs a solvency test each year to measure our progress towards fully funding our promised benefits? The latest solvency test found SD SERS having enough money in the bank to pay each and every current city, port, and airport retiree their benefits from now till death do us part. That is benefit security in action. Another challenge was the global financial crisis. In 2008, the global financial crisis decreased the investment portfolio by 5%. The following year in 2009, the investment market crash decreased the investment portfolio by an additional 19%. In the following years, the investment market rebounded and SD SERS was once again on the path to full funding. The market crash challenge gave SD SERS the opportunity to evaluate its long-term investment strategies risk budget, its diversification, and liquidity to ensure the investment portfolio is resilient to withstand oncoming investment market cycles. Did you know over the past 10 years, the investment portfolio has doubled from $4 billion to now a little bit over $9 billion? In fact, the SD SERS investment portfolio earnings pay for a majority of your monthly retirement benefit. Over the past 10 years, 
the investment portfolio has paid 62 cents for every dollar paid to you. The SDSER's growth from the market crash challenge was to again increase benefit security for its members, which leads us to today's challenge, the COVID pandemic. Marcel has shown how SD SERS rose to the COVID challenge and continued paying our members on time each month amid this COVID chaos. The SD SERS board and staff overcame numerous obstacles to build new service delivery tools that we can use beyond this COVID challenge. Importantly, we did so while keeping our team members' health and safety at the forefront of our decision making. SD SERS understands and values that each team member's contribution because together we can persevere and get through this COVID challenge. Did you know that your SD SERS team staff strive to uphold a core set of values and safeguarding and delivering your pension benefits? They are customer service, accountability, professionalism, fiduciary, integrity, and transparency. So SD SERS growth from the COVID challenge was to improve our ability to deliver services to our members in a variety of ways. Looking back, each challenge faced by SD SERS has been an opportunity for growth to ensure we deliver accurate and timely benefits to our participants and ensure the trust fund's safety, integrity, and growth. And that is precisely why your SD SERS team is here. Sending it back to you, Cynthia. Thank you so much. And just make sure my screen is shared. Sorry. There we go. How's that? Thank you. <laughs> so nice to see you all again today. And I'm, I'm happy that I know everyone in the audience, I believe, today. I want to share with you an excellent resource that is on our website, and I believe many of you are familiar with our member portal. There are, all, are several ways to uh, view that from our website. We want to make it easy on folks. So if you can locate that from our website, then all you need to do is register. By clicking on the register button, you'll simply follow the instructions. It will tell you exactly what to do. And for retirees, the most important piece of information you need is just the net amount of your last pension payment, which is easily found on your bank statement. Well, now that you're registered, what are all the things that you can do? We have a lot of information that you can view up under member account details. You can look at a number of items here, but there is all, are an, also a number of things that you can do using the tools on our website. Let's take a look. Most important thing to look at is your pension payment. Of course, because you wanna know that you got paid and how much you got paid. But I also wanna point out that it is more secure to view your pension statement online rather than be receiving a hard copy via mail. It is more secure via our member portal. And additionally, it's also most efficient and cost effective. As you'll all recall, SD SERS operates out of an, a trust fund that is solely for the use of SD SERS and its payments and benefits. And so it is our fiduciary duty to be most wise without money. So this is one of our many things that we do to use our resources most efficiently. I also find it to be a great tool, and that's why on our, your member portal, you can locate that pension payment from three different locations. Just look for that dollar sign and you will find it. Once you click on that, you will have the ability to view all of your past pension statements, certainly in the most recent month, but you can also go back and compare prior years. This might be a, um, a tool someone needs when they're conducting taxes or some, time of, some type of budget planning, and that's very useful to have all that in one place. Now, how many of you have refinanced or purchased a car or an RV lately? Maybe you haven't, but believe it or not, we get this question at least once a week at SD SERS. People call up and say that a bank is requiring proof of their retirement earnings, and it's very important that they have it right away. <laughs> this became such a popular item that we decided to make it automatic for you. So on your member portal, if you just click on proof of retirement earnings, magically a letter will show up instantly that is addressed to you. It will state what your allowance is and give a few details and even contact information. You could either print that and mail it or hand it to your lender, or you can save it and email it. 
We have found this to be a very useful tool for our members. And again, this is a very efficient way of handling that. Now, tax documents. Of course, taking care of our taxes timely is very important to all of us, and we work with you all to make sure that we communicate well how our taxes, how our uh, 1099 forms are being sent out. Now, on the SDSERS website, under the account details, we do have tax reporting. And from here, you would be able to view the most recent 1099 plus past years. Now, our goal, as always, is to have those documents sent to you and available online as soon as possible. And again, we are working as diligently to ensure that we have those posted timely. But I just want to remind you that this is an excellent place to be able to see that information, be able to compare it to past information, or if you need an extra copy of a document. Now, of course, it's always important to keep your beneficiaries up to date. And I just want to remind you, as you know, that when you retired, you made some irrevocable decisions. If you named a continuance, that cannot be changed, nor would your benefit option. But you have a retiree death benefit that you can change at any time, and we do want you to make sure that that is up to date. And please do inform your family members of the benefits that are available to them so that you can all plan together. Now, each year in November, uh, many retirees ask about receiving an additional supplemental benefit, which is properly known as the Annual Supplemental Benefit in San Diego Municipal Code Section 24.1503. We will be determining whether the annual, annual supplemental benefit payment will be made at our November board meeting. That will be announced immediately after the board meeting. And then if that were to be paid in this year or in a year, you can, you can obviously go to the website and you can view the history. This was also a question we had received from for a number of folks. You can see when you received it, that the amount was steady. And you can also do the same thing for those of you who are eligible for the Corbett benefit. So again, in November, you will be looking for the annual supplemental benefit. I want to make sure we're all using the proper terms in the municipal code. Now, I want to thank you for listening to all this. And, and just re few, to recap a few of the things that we really wanted to share with you today is that we're here for you. You can contact our call center at the number here, 525-3600. And again, we, we created a remote call center so that we can serve you in the pandemic and beyond. If need be, we could even go to Jim Barras's house and set up a remote REA center. So one of the ideas that I've gathered from these Zoom meetings. Additionally, um, on our SDSERS website, of course, we have a great deal of information. We will share with you anything uh, pertinent news that's happened would be right there on the front page. And of course, you can um, send us um, questions via the website as well. We are always doing our best to keep you up to date. I want to give a special thank you to our communications manager, Jessica Maloney, who keeps that website in great shape. I want to thank um, REA, who also has been wonderful about helping us keep our website up to date. When they notice a tiny edit that needs to be done, they let us know right away, and that is greatly appreciated. Yes, Chris Brewster, I'm talking to you. And uh, again, we enjoy working in partnership with you and um, welcome most certainly any questions that we have right now. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. That seemed to have worked. Does it look correct? <laughs> Great. So, I know that um, many of you out there are regular visitors to these meetings and um, know all about uh, us and <laughs> talk to us regularly, but certainly would want to entertain any questions that anyone might have, or if we have any uh, new folks here, any type of questions at all, we'd be glad to answer those for you. Jim, what, we, what do we want people to do who want to ask questions? Not hearing you, Jim. You're muted, Jim. <laughs> All right, if you have a question, um, you can do the chat. You can do it under the chat function, or you can raise your hand. That doesn't work. I thought I, I thought I saw Joan trying to talk. Yes. Yep. Hey, Joan, Joan. Yeah. Uh, I've been getting some questions from the, my people that want to know more about the, what medical they chose and how to use it. And they're not getting it in the programs that they go to. They, I think they need more individual help because you're doing what I didn't have. So I really can't help them. So, so uh, for retiree medical 
the best place to go would be to call um, Care Council, and that number is on our website. It's in the health book that goes out every year. That is the best place if you want to find out what you have available to you under the plan you've selected. If you need a comparison of plans, if you're having a challenge getting services, if you're having a challenge getting something covered, Care Council is there for you. That is that is their role. Um, the staff that I have in the office that's my health team is not going to be able to answer those kind of detailed questions for you. They'll be able to tell you what you're enrolled in and they'll be able to tell you how much you're paying for it, but they won't be able to give you the details of what does that actually cover and how does it compare to other health plans. So care council would be the best option and I don't have their number off the top of my head, but I will try and find it before we finish today and put that in the chat for you. Um, but again, it's on our website and it also is prominently displayed in our health booklet that goes out to all of our retirees, regardless of whether or not you have an allowance available to you for purchasing health insurance. Does that answer your question, Joan? No. Okay, what's your question? It was, these people don't even know which one they chose. Okay, and, so. And they need help finding out which one they chose. So they can look on their um, pay stub will tell them who they chose. They can call our office and we can tell them who they chose and care council can help them with that. Yeah, because I've had two calls alone. They say, I chose it so long ago, I can't even remember what I did. Yeah, so they should be able to see that, as I said, on their pay stub, they'll see the deduction for it. If it is one of the sponsored healthcare plans, if it's not a sponsored healthcare plan, if they've gotten healthcare services outside of SD SERS, then we're not gonna be able to tell them what they chose. But if they chose one of our sponsored plans, um, they can call our office and we should be able to tell them they can look on their pay stub. And again, they can call, call uh, care council as well. Those are all resources. Well, like them. I said, they wanna they want know if it's A, B or C. They don't know. About. I understand what you're asking. You're asking, okay, different question. You're asking what they selected for their health option for reimbursements. That is a yeah. question that needs to go to risk management at the city of San Diego. So risk management is who maintains that data and that is who handled that process when it went through. Um, if they are actively working and they selected option A or option B, they'll see a deduction on their paycheck. If they are retired already, um, then they would need to call City of San Diego uh, Risk Management Department and they would be able to tell them what option they selected, whether it's option A, option B, or option C. I gave them a choice of that or you, so. <laughs> yeah, the, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, um, we do have that, we have that information, but we're not the source of record for it, so I can't guarantee that what information that we initially were provided is still what is current. Um, as people retire, we do work with risk management and make sure that we do have the correct information. But risk management is the one that has the master listing of that. And that was their program to determine whether you selected option A, B, or C. Okay, thank you. Sure. I also want to note that Linda Moskowitz was kind enough to share the Care Council phone number. So thank you. Thank you. you. Anybody else have any questions? I, I have a question uh, regarding your webinars. Now, the webinars are basically pre-retirement seminars. Is that correct? Yes. And do you do these early in one's career, or do you do them when they when they're nearing retirement, or both? Thank you, Dick. Yes, we have a robust program, and people can go at any time during their career. When the, seminar, when the webinars are advertised, there is an explanation of each. For example, a pre-retirement seminar would be for someone at any point in their career. Often people wait a little while when they start thinking about it, but certainly they could come at any time in their career. Then we have the drop entry is particularly for folks who are eligible to enter drop and who are getting very close to that. We also have drop exit to help folks learn about the decisions they make before they leave drop. But for folks who are not right at retirement age, we offer a, a whole smorgasbord for them in the pre-retirement seminars. And we, we cover all of those pieces to that to make sure that they can plan far in advance or when they're closer. As an example, for someone who would be planning in the earlier stages of their career, one of the main things they need to know is what is the plan that they're in and, and, how, do you, and how they can um, estimate their future benefit using the calculator on our member portal. Great, thank you. 
Thank you. I, I have a comment. Uh, Cynthia talked about the effort to um, update and correct the web page. And one of the things that she also addressed was the annual supplemental benefit. And I want to commend her because she never once used the term 13th check. The only reason I'm using the term 13th check is that that has been commonly used in place of the technically correct term annual supplemental benefit. It's REA's feeling, uh, along with the retired fire police, that the, the informal title of 13th check uh, is rep it gives an in incorrect uh, impression that we get a whole extra additional 13th payment during the year. So we have been pushing and not, uh, it's, it's been an easy sell with SERS to try to wipe the 13th check from our terminology and to move to annual supplemental benefits. So I wanted our, our members who are listening to understand what, it, to clarify it and understand that why we have been working with SERS to, uh, to get that corrected. And, and she mentioned Chris Brewster, he's on our board and he, he, he found a couple of small places on the website and we forwarded it to Cynthia and she got it corrected right away. So thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. And again, I, I do wanna emphasize <laughs> the partnership that we have here because we're, everybody's always busy, but um, more eyes are better. And again, that's, there's interesting things from our past that just cause confusion. I've had to explain that to younger members. And so I'm like, no, mm -mm. annual supplemental benefit. So thank you, Dick. I appreciate it. I really had to practice hard on that one. And together as a team, we have clarified. I hope I didn't mess you up uh, by saying the dirty word, but uh, no, I wanted to, give you, no. I wanted to <laughs> commend you. Yeah, no, that's part of the trick is that we want our members to know what we're talking about, but we, we need to have this transition. But I think we're going really well. Everybody is on board with it. And we all just want the best. We want to be supporting the good work that we're doing, that you're doing, and just want to be a responsible part of the community and be informed. All right, other questions? Yeah, Dick, I have a question. Okay. Chris? Do you pledge never to say that again? You said it four times just now. Who are you talking to? You, Dick. <laughs> Do you want me to swear on a stack of Bibles or what? Well, no. <laughs> I'm just hoping going forward you're as um, good at this as Cynthia was. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to do it once. I'll never, ever do yep. it again. Thank How you. How about a chip jar? <laughs> We're all on the same page. We're doing great. We got a great team here. <laughs> I want our members to know we're looking out for their yep. interests and we're, we're promoting uh, good images and uh, we're working on public perceptions and uh, that's all part of what we do as REA. Absolutely. Did anybody else have any questions or comments? I just want to, uh, I don't want to shut it off because we're, we're good on time but i want to thank you guys for a great presentation um it, it was it was it was the best you guys have ever done for us it's interesting <laughs> that that happened under uh, a virtual setting but it, you really did a great job i thought uh greg's was, was particularly creative in terms of uh, <laughs> uh bringing a lot of different perspectives into this and letting us know that the progress that he took us back in history to some dark times and then pointed out that we've, we've come a long way since then you've come a long way since then and, and i know i sound like a broken record but we now have a good positive working relationship between us and and uh sirs and the staff and the board and uh they really have come a long long way and we're very confident in the job that staff and board are the board is, are doing and uh, we know it's going to continue so I just want to thank you for all that you guys do. Um, our primary liaison uh, is Cynthia. She's been very responsive and really uh, has done an outstanding job as have all the other people uh, there that we deal with on a day in and day out basis and Greg since your arrival you've done a great job as CEO and really promoted and enhanced our partnership. And we really, 
on behalf of all of our members and all the retirees really do thank you and appreciate it. Anybody else? All right, thank you again, sirs. Thank you to our, those that participated with us today. Um, we encourage you to tune in next month and uh, we'll continue to, to move forward and, and, and let's, let's keep it going with doing our social distancing and then by, by all means wear those damn masks, okay? <laughs> so, uh, and with that, we'll, we'll sign off. Thank you all very, very much for a great meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. One chat. One chat. What's that?